all know we are here outdoors because we stand on the threshold of a historic moment in Boston's labor movement, where three quarters of the unionized hotels may potentially walk the picket line later today. And they're doing it for the security and the future of their own families, but also for all of our families. Hello, powerful people, and welcome back to Power at Work. My name is Seth Harris. I'm a senior fellow at the Burns Center for Social Change, and I'm delighted to welcome you back for this Power at Work blogcast. We are honored today to present another Labor Day blogcast. It turned out, let me say, very different than we expected, but I promise you're in for a moving and powerful experience. Uh, in this blogcast, you're going to see what happens when Boston's annual Labor Day breakfast turns into a picket line, a protest, and a celebration of working people and worker power. It takes place outside the hotel where there's a strike by the Union of Hospitality Workers, Unite Here, uh, you know, Local 26, which is the uh, Boston local uh, of Unite Here. And let me just say, a uh, friend of the blog, uh, they represent the dining workers at Northeastern University. So we're delighted to be able to feature them in this blogcast. So you're going to see the picket line. You're going to see the protest. Uh, you're going to hear from labor leaders. You're going to hear from supportive elected officials, including the governor, both sen U.S. senators, a representative. Uh, you'll hear from some local elected officials. But most important, most important, you're going to hear from the strikers and their supporters, both from inside their local union and from other unions as well. It's powerful. It's moving. It's uplifting. It's optimistic. It's worker power in action. Uh, so today's Power at Work Labor Day blogcast delivers all of that and more. Now, before we get to our short form Labor Day documentary. You should know that Power at Work is a proud member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network, which brings together more than 200 labor radio shows and podcasts. To learn more about the network or to find other labor radio shows and podcasts, and let me say there's a lot of terrific labor content out there. This is the place to find them, www.laborradionetwork.org. And if you would like to listen to or download any or all of the Power at Work blogcasts in podcast form. They're available for streaming and download on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Overcast. Just search Power at Work. We will pop right up. You'll find it on any commercial podcast platform. While you're there, when you find us, there are two things I'd like you to do. Number one, subscribe, and that way you won't miss any of our podcasts. And secondly, Give us a five-star rating. That will help other people who, like you, care about workers and worker power to find us on that uh, podcast platform. So those are the two things you should do. Subscribe and give us a five-star rating. They will appreciate it, and so will we. Now, our first Labor Day podcast or blogcast for 2024 featured AFL-CIO President Liz Schuler's State of the Union's Address 2024. Uh, we think it's essential viewing. That's why we posted it on Power at Work. If you haven't watched or listened to President Schuler's speech, go to Power at Work right after you finish this blogcast and watch it or download it. Uh, yeah, watch it on Power at Work or download it from your favorite podcast provider. Uh, that speech, President Schuller's speech, was a view from the top leadership of the labor movement. Today, we're going to be right on the front lines of the labor movement, the picket lines. Uh, we're going to be with the frontline workers who are striking to get a fair contract at Boston's hotels. Now, that wasn't what we had planned. I'll be blunt with you. That was not what we had planned. Uh, with the generous help of President Darlene Lombos and the staff at the Greater Boston Labor Council, we were going to video the GBLC's Labor Day breakfast. Usually it's held in a hotel ballroom and there are lots of speeches by politicians and labor leaders. So what we were going to do is we were going to record the speeches we were going to pull aside some participants and ask them some questions, some serious, some a little bit goofy. 
Um, and it was a great plan. And we, uh, we can't thank President Lombos enough for being willing to welcome us into that event. Uh, then the hotel workers went out on strike, as sometimes unions need to do uh, when things are not going the right way at the bargaining table and the boss needs a little kick in the you-know-what. Um, and to their immense credit, President Lombos and her team improvised, right? They didn't miss a beat. So they announced the breakfast was going to be held outside the hotel because, of course, no one attending this breakfast would ever cross a picket line. Uh, and they shouldn't. None, you shouldn't either. No one should be crossing picket lines. Um, and, but even more important, everyone attending the GBLC breakfast wanted to show their support for the striking hotel workers. And that's what you are going to see in today's blogcast. A celebration of Labor Day turned into a demonstration of worker power, or as Congresswoman Ayanna Presley puts it in uh, the video that you're about to watch, the broadcast you're about to watch, it's beautiful solidarity, and it's beautiful indeed. I think it's a great phrase. Uh, our phenomenal, fantastic, there aren't enough adjectives for them, power at work team, improvised right along with the GBLC. Uh, Bonnie McGilpin, who is the Burns Center's communications director, helped to navigate uh, the mass of politicians and labor leaders that she knows from her time working in, uh, for the Boston mayor's office. She also helped to organize the team and get everybody there. Uh, Tom Walsh did a great job conducting the interviews. You're going to see him on camera at times. Uh, Tom is a recent Northeastern University graduate. He's also a Power at Work alumnus. Uh, we're immensely proud to say that he is starting work as a union representative for AFSCME this month. Uh, Angelique Kasem produced and directed and shot Tom's interviews and parts of the uh, rest of the video. Angelique is a current Northeastern University student working with the Burns Center as part of our co-op program. Uh, she's a critical contributor, not just to the broadcast you're going to see today, but to all of our work at Power at Work. Um, Emily Spatz is a current Northeastern student. She's a Power at Work editorial board member. She reported on the GBLC event for Power at Work, writing just a terrific, a wonderful piece of journalism that we published just a few days before we published this blogcast on Power at Work. So after you watch or listen to this blogcast, go to Power at Work and read Emily's post. It gives you a very different perspective on the day, on Labor Day and the strike uh, at the hotel. She, uh, Emily's a very talented journalist, uh, and uh, you'll benefit from reading her stuff. And then finally, Zeno Minotti, who's Power at Works co-op student, recorded the speeches and did just a phenomenal job, uh, an unbelievably good job, <laughs> editing all of the video that was captured on that day and putting together what ended up being a powerful documentary that you're about to watch. Uh, but don't take my word. Don't, don't, don't rely on my adjectives. You're going to come up with your own adjectives because you're about to see Zeno's handiwork that pulls together the work of everybody else on the great Power at Work team that was there on Labor Day. I think you're going to agree this was a Labor Day to remember in Boston and we're honored to be able to present it to you. So that's our broadcast. You are our audience. Here's Celebrate Later, Fight Now, a Labor Day to Remember in Boston. Enjoy. It is about defending your rights in the workplace while recognizing we still have a lot more to do to ensure the well-being of our workforce. Yeah, what does Labor Day mean to you? Uh, Labor Day is a day of action. It's a day to celebrate working men and women across America, the union, 
Americans had built, America had built the middle class. So it's a, not just a, you know, a holiday, um, it's, a, it's a really a day of action. Labor Day is an opportunity to celebrate hardworking workers right here in Massachusetts and across the country. Um, here in Massachusetts, we want to continue to lift up our workers, hardworking individuals that give back to our economy, help to lift up our communities, and we want to make sure that they feel seen, not only today, but throughout the year. Local 26. Labor Day is the right day to start a strike for workers' rights. Thank you, Local 26. So being out here today and seeing your union in full force, how does that make you feel? Solidarity yeah, it feels great. I mean, this is what Labor Day is all about. Labor Day is a celebration of the working class in the United States, a celebration of labor movement, a celebration of great victories like the eight-hour day um, and health and safety at work. And these workers are members, the hotel workers at this hotel and the other hotels that are on strike, they're out fighting the same fight. They're fighting for one job to be enough. They're fighting to be respected at work. Um, if you ask anybody here on the bigot line, is the economy working for you? They'll say, no, it's not. They can't afford groceries. They can't afford the rent. They can't afford to take their kids out once in a while. Um, and if you ask them who's to blame for that, they'll put the blame squarely on the hotel industry. <laughs> After COVID, folks came back in difficult circumstances. They sacrificed a lot to get this industry back to record profitability. And what has happened in this bargaining, the industry slapped them in the face. And that's why everyone's out here today. They're out there, they're picketing, and they're chanting, make them pay, because we're gonna make the hotel industry pay. So uh, obviously, we're the hotel workers. We represent hospitality workers in general. COVID was a huge hit uh, for us, right? I became president in 2020. We lost 95% of our workers to layoff in 2020. So a lot of what we've been doing over the past several years is rebuilding our union, working together to try to figure out how we can represent our members as this industry recovers fully. And now that it's returned to full profitability, that's uh, put us in this position where we're demanding the uh, largest wage increases and the best benefit increases that we've ever had in the history of this local. Because at the end of the day, uh, we're not gonna allow the, the, the companies to engage in a version of disaster capitalism where they make cuts over and over and over again uh, during the pandemic and then they wanna keep them in place after the pandemic when they're reaping record profits and taking it back to the billionaires in the real estate industry in New York who own these hotels. And that's why folks are out here on the streets today having this fight. All right, let's get this party started. All across our country, people are realizing that unions are the best tool we have to fight against corporate greed, to fight against the historic inequities, because one job should be enough, right, brothers and sisters? No matter what union you come from, no matter what you do for work, whether you're in a union or not, we all agree on some basic stuff. It's family sustaining wages, it's health care, it's retirement security, it's dignity on the job, it's health, it's training. We all also want to have each other's backs, so when greedy developers, shady corporations, and right-wingers try and pick on one group, like hotel workers, they see an entire 12.5 million workers nationwide standing in solidarity with that group. The labor movement is committed to growing the middle class and diversifying it as we go. We want to create an economy that works for everybody. A lot of these uh, hotels are banking on us being divided, but we're showing them different. So we're, we're members of the Hilton Logan, but we're here to support our, our, our fellow workers. No matter what hotel you work at, we're always here for each other. We're Local 26, but we're Unite here, Local 26, and today you can see that we're more united than ever against these corporations. As we all know, we are here outdoors 
because we stand on the threshold of a historic moment in Boston's labor movement, where three quarters of the unionized hotels may potentially walk the picket line later today. And they're doing it for the security and the future of their own families, but also for all of our families. I'm not going to stand up here and talk about victories and successes when our brothers of Local 26 are in a fight for their jobs and a fight for their livelihoods right across the street. together and um, enhances it and makes sure it's that we're all in, in solidarity, all behind uh, workers, all behind the unions, all behind the common uh, men and women throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And what do unions mean to your community? Uh, unions mean to my community. Community is, look around, this is what it means. Uh, people coming together, uh, fair wages, uh, people who are going to fight for 
um, the rights of the workers. How can unions affect political change and participate in the political process? Again, we look around here. <laughs> this is how it could change. You have thousands of people coming together uh, for one for one union. Now let's put all the unions uh, or everyone's um, concerns on the plate. That, that's tens of thousands of people uh, coming together, you know, being down doors, banging, and getting their voices heard um, throughout the Commonwealth. So that's what that's what it is. If you look around, you have every single uh, political person right here downtown Boston, from all the way from the Berkshires to the Capes and the Islands, here today supporting you. What's your name? Ian Seal. Ian. Yeah. Good to meet you. Good to Are you in Local 26? Yes, I am. How are you feeling today about this show of solidarity? I think it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, um, we're going to have a big breakfast coming up with all the big yeah. movements. And um, this is great. I'm going to turn it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I wish more people would join the unions. You ready? Yeah. So, Gustavo, yeah. Uh, what union are you in? Uh, Local 26. And what do you do at? Uh, cook. I like, like cook in the, in the kitchen. And how, how long have you been in Local 26? Uh, tw almost 20 years. Wow. Yeah, we got a long time working on that. Yeah. yeah. And so in that 20 years, how do you feel like... I'm pretty much, pretty much good to work out there with people. Yeah. We are all together, so pretty good job, everybody. And what would you say to people that are doing your job that aren't in the union? What, why should they be in the union? They should be in the union. They got good benefits. They got good and everything there. Yeah. Good pay, money. And how do you support Today, seeing all these people out here in solidarity with you, how does that make you feel? Hey, I'm very happy to see everybody here. Get all, everybody together. We can be get it straight to get that pay. Absolutely. Yep. All right, thanks so much. Uh, for me, personally, the union has uh, changed me in a way where I've become more of a leader. I've been um, at the hotel part of the union for 17 years now. Um, I've been a shop steward for a little bit over a year and a half, and then just about six months ago became the chief shop steward at my property. Um, the youngest guy out of everybody in the group. So um, being able to hone in my skills and lead um, a, a, a big group of people, um, I I can only um, receive that from being part of the union. And that's what the union has been able to provide for me, is being able to guide people and bring everybody together to be united to, for things just like this, where we're fighting for our lives and we're coming together to make sure that the world knows that we're ready to fight. <laughs> That's a tough act to follow right there. It's a really tough act to follow. Um, I would agree with Michael that I mean I feel really good that we are able to come together in solidarity. It's it's a great the support of the union is fantastic. And just knowing that no matter what you're kind of not alone. And Mike put it very elegantly. With um for me, the union means that the union has given it has made me have a voice. I was, I'm a very timid person and the union has given me a voice and basically union gives the voiceless a voice. It makes us strong because you know these companies make us feel worthless but we're not and the union lets us know every day that we matter. Down there, and what do you do? Well, I'm retired, but I, I used to be a server and a bartender at the Fairmont Catholic Bar. And how long how long were you in the union for? 23 years. Wow. And in that time, from when you started to now, how have things changed? Have they gotten better? Have they gotten worse? I think the organization has gotten stronger. Certainly the membership has grown significantly since even I retired seven years ago. And I see much more when it may be a little bit inconvenient, it may interfere with their schedule, yeah. but the issues are important. What, what do you think is causing that greater turnout? Yeah. Uh, I think what's causing it is the threat to institutions like the union uh, and the threat to democracy on a larger scale.
what do you think unions can do to stop those threats and to help those institutions preserve? Hold their feet to the flame. Uh, like President Zelensky is doing in the Ukraine, he's got to be untethered. He's got to be able to go where the enemy is. And strike at Russian. He's got to strike at Russia on the coast. Yeah. And this is the home soil of the Saunders family in Boston. Yeah. The first hotel with air conditioning wow. in the city of Boston. I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's a landmark property, and the family is a landmark family in the hotel industry in Boston. And they're concerned with their profit. That's their job. Good luck to them. And if they're not forced to let go of the littlest bit of that profit, they will be you can stay up to date with the latest news about workers, worker power, and unions by subscribing to Power at Work. You'll receive the weekly download, a Power at Work newsletter sent straight to your inbox. The weekly download collects about two dozen of the week's articles, academic studies, press releases, podcasts, and videos from across the internet. We find the stories and deliver them directly to you. So subscribe to the weekly download right now on the front page of Power at Work's website. Go to poweratwork.us. Sort of my um, my labor family, my hospitality family are here today. And you know, one job should be enough. I mean, people um, contribute so much to the city and to our economy. They deserve predictable work schedules. They deserve a living wage. Uh, they deserve economic freedom. They deserve for their humanity and their dignity to be centered. And for their labor to not be taken for granted. And very often, especially when you're in a service industry, I know that was my own experience, people make assumptions about you. They look over you. They look through you. Your labor is invisible to people. Uh, and so we're here uh, to make sure that uh, they see um, these workers, that they see their families, and that they, um, you know, do the right thing by these workers. <laughs> When uh, you were uh, a hotel employee, what would it have meant to you to see politicians like this back you in this sort of regard? It would feel incredible. I would feel like my life mattered, like my labor mattered, and that um, I would be very grateful for the solidarity. So that's exactly why I am here today. Um, and, and it is a beautiful demonstration of solidarity from the entire labor community. I wish we did not have to be here, um, but we will continue to organize, we'll continue to fight, we'll continue to push until um, uh, these workers get what they deserve. Workers' rights are human rights. This is about dignity, this is about quality of life, it's about economic freedom and economic justice. They deserve living wages, and they deserve predictable schedules. I mean, listen, I remember getting up at 4 a.m., going to work in the dark, preparing to work a double shift, you know, my back aching from carrying heavy trays all night. But, you know, I was resolved. I had um, um, a sick parent to take care of. Um, you know, I had a lot of responsibilities, so I was resolved. And that's true for everyone here today. You know, they're, they're doing this work because they love the city. They love their job. Um, many of them have been working here at these hotels um, for decades. And they love their families. And they deserve to have predictable work schedules, to know if they'll be home in time, to go over homework, to tuck their kid in, to support a spouse that needs them or a parent that needs them. So that's what we're here fighting for. I also want to say a special thank you to Welcome 26 members who made this event possible. Thank you. And to every union member and union leader who gets out there every day and fights for stronger families and for a stronger America. Thank you. Now we have an election coming up. And today, Labor Day, right here with Local 26 on the picket line, there's just one thing we need to know. When workers go on strike, 
Donald Trump thinks corporate executives should fire them. Democrats believe when workers go on strike, our leaders should walk the picket line with them. And that is why we are here today. Senator Markey, Congresswoman Presley, Mayor Wu, and all of our legislators and representatives, we don't phone it in, we show up and show our support. I look around here and I'm so proud to stand with so many of you, to stand with the incredible MNA workers, the nurses and the SEIU workers at Stewart walking the picket line at Stop and Shop with the UFCW, and with BU grad students, with the UAW workers in Mansfield, and today, walking the picket line in solidarity with Local 26. Local 26, I walked with you in 2018 at the Weston Copley, and I will walk the picket line with you again today because one job should be enough. It has never been more important to stand up to the biggest enemies our workers have to corporate greed. And that's exactly what you are doing every day. The hotel workers of Local 26, we are with you. <laughs> Baristas at Starbucks, we are with you. <laughs> Warehouse workers at Amazon, we are with you. <laughs> Nurses and workers at Stewart Healthcare who stand for health over wealth, we are with you. <laughs> labor built this country. It's been that way, it will always be that way. And today we gather in solidarity and in celebration with all of our labor friends. We are all in this together. We know, we believe that our workers are the backbone of our economy and all workers deserve to be fairly paid and fairly treated and importantly, to have their voices heard. You know, I saw something special that you don't see. I saw GM Phil Ang is doing a fantastic job on the team, walking right alongside Jimmy Evers and the Carmen here this morning. That's how, that's what teamwork is in this state. That's what makes everything work, all right? And I just want to thank you guys, not just for walking together today, but walking together every day over the last 18 months to improve our team and the quality of life for people. See, it takes labor and working people working with management to get it done. That's the formula. Thank you, guys. This council on the underground economy was very underground, like not happening. So today I'm announcing we are bringing that back in full force, chaired by Secretary Jones, making sure that workers are treated fairly in our state. It's up to us to stop employer fraud, employee misclassification, and so much more. So we're going to lean into that and bring back the strongest ever council on the underground economy. Why should people, working people, be here today instead of at the beach for Labor Day weekend? Instead of at the beach. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, those people are already at the beach. <laughs> but next year, if hopefully this is not going on for a year, I'm hopeful that this will be resolved quickly. And the amount of turn up, you know, when I came here, I thought these, I thought this was some special event for the hotel, but it turns out to be support yeah. for union for the union effort. And uh, people. Uh, people have got to take advantage of union power. Uh, the union, my dad was a retired Cambridge fireman. When he started working in the late 40s, after he got out of the military, 48 hour week was the norm. 48 hours. I can remember when union power gave us a 40 hour week standard. And that was the time that that happened. I can remember the time that he came home and he said, I'm only going to be working 40 hours going forward. I thought, gee, we're going to see you a lot more often. And that meant a lot to a child. I can remember being at the event with my father, like Thanksgiving.
Thanksgiving, Christmas, we'd be sitting down to dinner, and he'd get a telephone call, and he had to go out to his work. They needed it. And he would leave, my wife, my, my mother would uh, keep the uh, meal hot until he got back, hours later, after a school on, three alarm fire. So that was the nature of firefighting, and it still is. Uh, and God bless them. And I support uh, firefighters and the police. in greater numbers today. And this, I think, is a significant turnout. But if there were more people here, this would get resolved quicker. People coming to this hotel for their holiday would be feeling free. We wasted our money coming here during this night. Thank you very much for watching Celebrate Later Fight Now, uh, Labor Day to Remember in Boston. Uh, again, we're deeply grateful to GBLC President Lombos and her entire team, uh, and to all the workers and union leaders and retirees and politicians, elected officials who spoke to us for this broadcast. You know, the simple eloquence of the workers that you met today is it's going to stay with me for a long time. You know, when we talk about unions giving workers voice, but that doesn't just mean unions being a voice for working people. It means union members are able to use their voices, use their words, speak out for themselves. And these workers have demonstrated how immensely powerful and important it is when that happens. And, and what a privilege it is for us to be able to capture what they were a, what they wanted to say about this important Labor Day in Boston. So we trust you enjoyed our mini documentary and maybe learned a few things about solidarity and what it means to the working people and unions of Boston. If you did, we'd be grateful if you would tell your friends, your family, your coworkers, your union siblings, to click on powerwork.us and watch it for themselves. And, and even more important, we'd appreciate it if you and all of those people that you're going to recruit for us to watch this documentary would subscribe to Power at Work. That way we can keep you updated on all the great content that we have. We can include you in activities that we do. We will send you the weekly download that you heard about earlier. Um, so subscribe. Go to the front page of powerwork.us. And there's a subscription form that pops up. If it doesn't pop up, right at the bottom of the front page, there is a subscription form that you can fill out. We don't ask for a lot of information. It is absolutely free. We do not ask you for any money of any kind or anything else. We never sell our lists, give our lists away. It's just between you and us. It's you being assured that you're going to be able to keep up with the terrific work of the Power at Work team that you met today. Um, you can connect with Power at Work in a lot of ways in addition to subscribing. Most important, you can now comment on any post on Power at Work. There is a box at the bottom of every page on Power at Work that allows you to add in a comment, say what you would like to say, use your voice as the workers in this video did. If you don't want to write anything, just give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you appreciate the work that we are doing. 
Um, but we're available to you on a lot of social media channels as well. We have pages on LinkedIn and Facebook. Just search Power at Work. You can find us at Power at Work blog on Twitter, X, and Threads. You can find us at Power at Work on Instagram and TikTok as well. You can find all of our blogcasts right here on Power at Work, but you can also find it on YouTube on the Burns Center for Social Change channel, multiple places where you can watch or listen to the blogcast. I encourage you to view all of them. As you can see, there's around 60 that are out there. They're terrific. There's a lot of great content there. So thank you again for joining us, for staying until the very end. We will see you again on Power at Work very soon. Public professionals, would you like to learn how data, digital, innovation, and AI skills can improve your work and help you serve your constituents better? The answer is Innovate US. Innovate US offers no-cost learning on the skills you need to succeed in government in the 21st century. Attend a one-hour weekly workshop or enroll in a course on AI or human-centered design at your own pace. It's all free to you. Visit innovate-us.org today to learn more and sign up. That's innovate-us. Visit right now.